Good evening and welcome to the YSU Alumni Series. I'm so honored that we have in the house Miss Carmela Marie Williams. My name is Jayetta Jackson. I am a senior lecturer in the communications department at Youngstown State University. I'm also the owner, director, and trainer of One to One Communication Consulting, a company that trains others in diversity, inclusion, and equity. We are speaking tonight with Ms. Carmela Marie. Carmela Marie is a 2005 graduate. 2005 graduate, am I right about that? That's right. <laughs> okay, 2005 graduate of uh, Youngstown State University. She's the Director of Diversity and Inclusion at the Youngstown Business Incubator, where she manages both the Minority Business Assistance Center and the Women Entrepreneurship Program. She is also the owner and kitchen chemist of Carmela Marie Inc. She started this natural hair company in June 2013. Carmela turned her passion for helping women realize their true self into a business by hosting Let's Talk Hair sessions and eventually creating a full natural hair care line offering eight products and counting. And I use them too, I love them. And these products can be purchased in various stores around town and online. Tonight, Carmela will discuss her story about how entrepreneurship builds confidence and how it helps you to develop meaningful leadership skills. So first of all, I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Jayana. You are so welcome. Um, I want to ask my first question just to kind of see your background a little bit. But how did you come up with the framework of how you empower people through entrepreneurship? What does that mean? Yeah, so first I'd like to have a definition of each of those terms, right? So I'm going to clear it. Um, an entrepreneur is a type of leader who sees a problem and actually creates a solution for that problem, right? And gets paid to do so. So that's an entrepreneur. Um, and that um, entrepreneur is in and of itself a leader. 
leader, right? If we have to see ourselves as leaders, it's very important because an entrepreneur is basically taking the initiative to solve the problem, which I do use that as a definition of a leader. So that's one. Um, and then empowering, um, the word empowering means giving power to, and I understand, I know that we start off with giving power to, but eventually, and I'm going to go over that a little bit, um, as time goes on and confidence is built, that, that entrepreneur becomes self-empowered, right? Oh, they right. Feel, have to use outside stimuli. They are powered from within, right? So that in and of itself is just a mindset. OK, um, and a mindset is a way of life, how you see things. Um, and Dr. Homer Warren, who was my favorite business professor at Youngstown State University, he's retired now, but he always talked about the consumer mindset versus the producer mindset. Right. Um, and for that, a producer mindset um, is Empowering people is basically moving individuals from being consumer mindset focused to producer mindset focused. And regardless if you're actually in business selling a product, um, entrepreneurship in and of itself is the mindset, okay? And most right. people fall into one either or category. So I just real quick, but a consumer is. A consumer normally is like students like different things, right? So let's give you an example, and I'm sure you'll be able to identify with this. <laughs> Um, as a kid growing up, you know, I would see the golden arches and immediately I thought of Happy Meal, my mouth water. And I'd be like, mommy, I want that because, um, and it's not, you know, we want it because it tastes good. Um, it's, it's a feel good food and it has a toy, you know, we don't think about it. Even as adults growing up, you know, we see, uh, most restaurants have red in it because it actually causes us to be in want and desire food. So with that said, we react right, to what right. we normally fed. A producer actually responds, right? So now as a, you know, adult, and when I see the golden arches, I don't think that my mouth doesn't water. I think that, you know, that's high cholesterol. That's not good for <laughs> me. <laughs> I need to get right. together. I'm gonna go make a healthier version of a burger um, using uh, grounded chicken or turkey and still have a much yummier, healthier option than what McDonald's could give, give me. As you can see, I produce something to solve a problem and make it better for me. So that is how we, you know, that's my concept that I kind of go off of. Um, and with that, I understand those are the two worlds, right? So when a, uh, when some of my women, because I do counsel a lot of women, we did the women's program, um, you know, a lot of women come to the program and, um, they're not, they're fed that they have to be perfect. You know, and I, you can identify with this, you know, I don't have any children. So they're like, when are you having kids? When are you getting married? You know, why don't you dye your hair? Cause you have gray, you know, all these things that um, people ask questions of us. And it makes us kind of, it kind of is like a microaggression that makes us feel a little, it just touts at us, right? It just beats at us just a little bit, right? So there's this confidence piece, right? But in entrepreneurship, it's going to show you everything. It is going to be a journey for you to know who you are. It will reveal to you who you are. And who you are is a, an individual with skill set, an individual who has a passion, and someone who can run a business, right? All you right. need are people who can say words to you that eventually feeding you words, right, such as you deserve to win, you are a great person, you have the skill sets, you have all the tools necessary, you know, to move you in consumer, right? So I'm feeding you these words, these positive affirmations to a point where you're able to feed yourself. Right, and you right. don't need Carmela to tell you, right? Now you're just like, I can do this. I've had a success. I remember what that success was and how I achieved that success. And if I can do that, I can do it again. So that's that's kind of how I look at empowering, you know, um, individuals through entrepreneurship. So do you give that message when people come to the YBI? I do, I do. We, um, and it's not, and you, and you know, it's very subtle. Everything is very subtle. So no one feels as if it's being shoved down your throat. Um, I look, I actually assess everyone that comes through the door, uh, whether you're my client or not, to see where you are and, 
I consider myself a leader. And as a good leader, I see where you are. I hear you tell me you want to go. But based upon the gap, I know this is what I'm going to have to do to get you to reach that goal. Right, right. So how did that lead you into Carmela Marie Inc? Yeah, so <laughs> um, at the time I was laid off from Youngstown State University. I was employed there for 12 years. And that summer I was trying to figure out you know, what it was I was going to do with my life because I wasn't going to sit around and just wait. Right. I was going to be proactive. I've always been in entrepreneurship. Um, my mother is an entrepreneur. I grew up in a very entrepreneurial household. So I was like, what can I do to get myself out of this funk, right? Um, so I was like, I, I've always wanted to help people. Um, and that was always my basis is building people. So that's my foundation for everything that I do. And, you know, one day um, as I was applying for jobs and didn't get this one particular job and I was frustrated, I was like, what the heck am I going to do in my life? Right. Okay. So with that, it was like, that was my prayer and clear as day. God was like, all that hair on top of your head, I'm going to need you to do something with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I just started going forth and figuring out, you know, what could I do? You know, is it a, is it a tool? Is it a product? Um, but what I can immediately start with was the items in my kitchen cabinet, right? So the Sorry. items in my kitchen cabinet. And I started pulling out things that I thought would be good to moisturize my hair or deep condition my hair. Um, and those failed miserably. So I took a seating, I took a seat and did some research, YouTube, read some books, you know, saw what other people were doing and created my first product. So you you just made a good point. You had an idea, you started pulling things out, but you realized you had to research. Yeah. And think about, because a lot of people have that entrepreneurial mindset, but they don't realize they have to research their product to see what they need to do in order for it to be a success. Totally. Research is so, so, so super important. Um, and I think research allows us to slow down and think through some things. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, just because at the, the top of my business, I started doing research, the research never stops, right? right. You're always really taking a time, a moment to pause, see where you are and try to answer questions um, or pull up big questions that will help you move forward. Exactly. So you did some research. Yes. And hopefully you went back to the cabinets and then what happened? I did. I did. And then I got my first product, right? It was a win. The oil and water and butter and all the emollients, all that mixed together came out nice and beautiful and fluffy. I packaged it in these little Dixie cups with a little lid on it, right? And on 4th of July, I took my batch of stuff to our family picnic on, in the, the heat of 4th of July. 2013 and I passed them out. I was so excited, passed them out to all my um, my aunties and my mom and my grandmother and my cousins. And they all looked at it. And if I had a sound thing that had crickets, that's what I had. It was just crickets. I was like, I was like, it's hair butter, it's natural butter. And they said, is it gonna burn my scalp? I said, it's natural. It's not gonna burn your scalp. So they still looked at it, looked at me because they didn't identify me as being a chemist in this hair product, you know, me doing hair, even just doing hair and making this hair product. But my auntie, who I love dearly, she was like, just put rub it on your knees and elbows. <laughs> and so they did. And this was my first test, right? So right there, I could have just stopped and said, hey, you know, my family didn't give me the affirmations that I needed. You know, no one cheered me on. No one understands me. Uh, they don't understand me. I'm not going to do it. But I didn't. You know why? Um, it's because I had a vision and the vision was to help people understand how to take care and love textured hair, fully coily, kinky hair, and I could do it. Um, so that same month, the last Saturday in July, I, I put up a, it's a, it was, it's officially called a focus group. That's what they teach you in school. Right. But I called it a let's talk hair session and, um, eight people RSVP'd and 16 people showed up. Nice and backwards numbers. So, um, it and it's been rolling ever since. So I've never been able to come because it's always I have an event 
or a rehearsal or something the same day and same time. I've been trying to get to your event for years. I really honestly have. And I've heard such wonderful things. Tell me a little bit about how the event grew because you had that eight people RSVPing and then 16 showing up to going to, I don't know, we had to put in RSVPs, buy tickets. Um, it was, it went from a small venue to a larger venue at YSU. So tell us a little bit about the growth of that event. Totally. So in that first year in 2013, I had a Let's Talk Care session every, every month for nine months straight. Um, and I, I grew that um, by actually listening to the, to the people who were attending. You know, I asked them questions. What are your hair problems? What products can I create to help you be better, right? So um, when they told me, I listened. And in between those 30 days, in between events, I would create a whole brand new product to show them and bring back to them, right? So um, in entrepreneurship, in, in the business world, listening to your clients is a number one thing. So with that said, I really never had to advertise, right? right, right. Um, I My clients were telling folk that this is little girl out here with this curly hair making products for us. And whatever you tell her you want, she going to make for you. And you need to come on out. So we were initially at You Deserve It uh, La uh, Lashery and Spot on um, Stadium Drive across the street from, it sets, uh, from the mall. Um, and we had maxed out with like 21 people. That's my girl, Nicole. She was so awesome and amazing. So we, because we were growing, because we couldn't fit no more people in there no more, and we had lines at the door, uh, we had to move it down to, where was that place? Uh, the, the, uh, the Rose Garden and the Tyler Room. And we started packing that place out with 40 women, right? Um, every month, 40 new women coming in, um, if not more, and the same, some of the same people coming in, getting more information. And I will say one of the days I was super impressed was when we had the day after Christmas, all these women packed out down at the Rose and it was amazing. Um, so it got to be too much because I couldn't, now I'm back to work, right? <laughs> I'm back to work. I'm producing product every month just to get to these events, right? I'm working full time. I'm trying to balance. You can't do research and development and develop the old products you had and do an event and go to work and still be halfway right. so Right. So I had to cut it down to where maybe we were doing one, like three in a year. Um, and then eventually, and then one big one in September. Um, and that one we went, um, we were at, we were at YSU for a, for a very long time. I want to say three years, three or four years. Um, and then we moved it to the inspiring minds building, which is Glenwood business center this, the summer prior. Uh, so that in and of itself was me developing a team, you know, a project manager and the person manning the table. So I, I actually trained my team to be able to um, know what the products were, how to explain them, who is, you know, who needs to get what, um, and then how to use it. So for us to move from a point where they needed me at all times to where they didn't need me was a huge step. It didn't come overnight, but through the, through the, you know, it's over time it did, and it did an excellent job. So um, I just kept getting ideas from other places. Like we would go to Essence Fest and see how that event was run. And we would take, bring some ideas back and we would go to, you know, Baltimore and we would go to. Uh, so that's still research. That's yeah, still that's research. You're going to see how other things are, are happening, how they're handling it as well. Right. Now you were seeing your growth and I bet that was exciting. It was. Did you have setbacks within that growth? Good question, because there was, right? There was. Um, I will say the probably the largest setback was when I ended up moving, um, leaving Youngstown State University in 2011. No, mm -hmm. it was a Lord Jesus. That's not right. It was in 2017, 2017, I, I left Youngstown State University to go down and work full time at the Youngstown Business Incubator, which is where I'm at now. Um, and doing a new job requires you to have more time. And, you know, when I first started, I was working 60 and 70 hours a week, um, very uh, heavily in the community, getting out as much as humanly possible, doing all kinds of extra, extra, uh, you know, things. 
Um, so it was that that year, my business in 2000 and um, the next year, the next fiscal year was it plummeted straight out. Um, but I had to learn and and actually just pivot and do something different as far as when we were selling, when we were actually going out to expos um, and bring it back in so that I could make sure that I was healthy. Right. right. And so that I could make sure that I was still healthy, but still moving forward in areas of my life. Cause I didn't want all of that to consume and overtake me. So. Right. You have a question. Um, we have a question from Laura on Facebook. She asked, what advice would you give to someone who has been in the business for years, but now has lost motivation? So she owns her own business, but she's asking what happens if you start to lose that motivation? Yeah, um, I get I, that happens to me often, right? I think that it is a part of this. It is a part of this journey. We're naturally going to get tired. We're naturally going to get discouraged because we don't feel as if we have done much. But I will say this: I would I would challenge her to go back and write down all of her successes that she's had. I do a lot of journaling, right? So I keep this handy dandy book, right? And in that handy dandy book, when I'm feeling some kind of excuse me, when I'm feeling some kind of way, I write my successes and re I remember how those successes made me feel. That's one. Two, um, surround yourself with people who are entrepreneurs, right? And it might not be a physical surrounding, but follow on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to. Carmela and Will <laughs> is, on, is my Instagram account because we are constantly, um, I am, I, I do teach and we, I try to, I motivate people but when I am motivating people, when I'm saying these things, all of those messages come to me first, right? So her first step was saying, I'm discouraged. And that's the first step to really, you know, admitting you have a problem. And then the next step is not sitting and wallowing in that. You know, if the vision is bigger for you, that vision is going to get you up, right? This is nothing but a speed bump. Right. And I give this analogy. Y'all know here in the Youngstown metropolitan area, wherever you are, there, there are potholes. Y'all seen them potholes. The tons potholes. of them. Tons, tons. Tons of potholes, right? And we get in our car, we hit a I hit a pothole and Jesus, take the wheel, because he need to, because it's going I busted a tire one time. But I didn't roll over and die, right? <laughs> what I did is call AAA, get my car fixed me to get a tire and then go home so because i know that i had a destination to reach right that one little speed bump is not going to stop me from reaching a destination but from even destination reaching my you know going towards my goal right i might not i'm not gonna make it to the sun because that's a far way off but i am going to drive towards it okay so you gotta have that vision so if you don't have a big enough vision to get you up in the morning it gets you moving. You gotta, you gotta dream a little bit bigger. Dream big. Do that. Follow me. Um, and one point that you made though is making those connections. Mm -hmm. Because I know I own my own business, and there are times when I'm feeling a little discouraged or I don't know what to do. I talk to you, and you're like, "Girl, yes." And sometimes talking to other people, they're your cheerleaders, and you're like, "Whoa, I didn't realize I was that awesome." But she said I was, so I guess I am. And today I spoke with someone and he was just giving me all types of advice and talking and it just reinvigorated me because he's an entrepreneur. Yes. So it's talking to people who have businesses and they might not be like your business in particular, but wow. talking to the movers and shakers mm -hmm. sometimes reignites you to say, okay, I got to get busy. I got to get started right. or keep right. going. Totally. And that's exactly what it is. Because when you don't have it in you, you gotta go. You have to pull from somewhere else until you can get up and get moving again. So yeah, totally. Any other advice for her before we move to the next question? Um, I think that's about it that I can think of. I'm trying to see what else do I do. You know, I um, I I just I, I think that she needs to just visit her business, what her goals are, and then let's start from there you know, um, to get, you know, re-energized. And if that doesn't re-energize you, you know, sometimes just talking to your customers can re-energize you because they are, they are sometimes, my customers, which I consider family, are my energizers. 
I got a text today from a, a really good uh, family phone. My, my, my customers are Carmela Marie family, their family, right? And she was saying how um, she, my products were teaching her how to love her hair better and how to work with it. And thank you so much for doing what you do. I was like, ooh. Nice. I can run a little further now. You know, those reviews, if, if they're posted or not, those are things that I can get you through too. I also challenge people who are entrepreneurs to be okay with listening to feedback mm -hmm. whether positive or negative i have i don't have yes people in my world <laughs> i have people who say hey that's just a little too much or oh that's not making sense or wait no i love a b and c but d e f e e and f mm, you might want to tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. and that really helps me put out a better product so then when i do what i do and people are raving about it it's okay that they told me to take those other things out because now I have a great product. So sometimes we're afraid of um, critical feedback. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That feedback that's going to help us to grow, but yet we don't really want to hear it. Okay, you can't, I'm gonna tell you this. If you ever see a person and they only have yes people around them, they're gonna fail fast, right? If you see a person who's asking you to tell me when something's not right, tell me how I can improve. It's not coming from a level of slow, you know, low confidence. It's coming because you want to be in business for a lifetime and not a day. And um, that is key. So that's the decision we have to make. Do you want to be in business for a day? Then go ahead. Yes, all day. But, you know, if not, then, you know, surround yourself with those people. Who are going to be truthful with you and i have those people you have those people i'm grateful for those people even though sometimes you know i sometimes i'd be feeling some kind of way just to be completely honest but i know that person is approaching me with love and concern you know um and we need those types of people in our lives right and we need people to help balance us because yes. i've told you numerous times okay carmela you can't do it all Help, let me give me something. So sometimes we have to learn how to delegate because mm -hmm. we don't want to burn out as well. So you have to have a trusted group of people at your table that you can kind of delegate information to or delegate them to get things done. Otherwise, you burn out. Right. And that and I'm glad you talked about that, because really, when you a person who has a hard time delegating, and I'm talking from personal experience, has trust issues, one, right? Um, two, you know, might they might not, maybe they're not sure, right? So that's something that I am constantly working on because I say trust issues, because I'd be like, Carmela, maybe that's not right. But let's, I'm gonna think it through a thousand times <laughs> before I give it out so I can make sure that it's right. And I might not think it all the way through to the exact end, but I wanna make sure that um, I have done the process myself as a leader before I give it so I can, so at least I know what to expect from that individual that I am delegating to. And that goes but for you can't, mm -hmm. you can't trust everybody with your baby though. So you, you have to, people have to earn their trust. You know right. what I mean? It, you can't just meet someone like, hey, I'll help you here. Tell me, give me your banking financial information. I'll handle that. And you're like, yeah, no. Mm -mm. Let, me, let me see that I trust you with my, my money and my this. And let me work with you for a while. Because even like our relationship, it's grown by leaps and bounds. But you didn't know me when we first met. So half of the stuff that I do now, right. probably I wouldn't have been doing back then. Totally. You know, it grows. It does grow. And even with, um, and, and we know, which I would say this, you know, with Black Period that we have, there's, you know, we had over 200 um, people who want to volunteer. And that's overwhelming, right? So we have this group of, you know, 200 people who want to volunteer. And then we have some more people who, other volunteers who are a little bit more like, hey, this is what I do. They gave us information. And it it is hard to, to you're trying to pull out and see who has what skill set, right? Um, right. and where you can be the greatest, have the greatest impact. And, um, and I think that it's a, entrepreneurship is a scary situation, but I think that once we understand that we have the power to hire and fire someone, that's the other thing, just because we bring somebody on, don't mean you got to keep them. And I think that us as people, we have to help others help themselves 
and let them go when it's time to go, okay? Because it's gonna help you in them, okay? And that's empowering to that person. And that's how you have to look. So we look at this, you see this mindset? I'm helping you and I'm helping me because if we stay like this, it's not gonna be. I'm a poet. It didn't mean uh -oh, look at you. Woo. But, <laughs> but that touches upon a point too, though. As an entrepreneur, you have to have the strength to let people go. And you yes. have to tell, I mean, sometimes we bring our friends or our family on, but you have to have that strength to be like, hey, I love you as my friend, but right, right. as my marketing manager, yeah, you, you're not doing what you need to do. So you also have to have that strength. You have to be careful of who you're bringing on and making sure that they do have some type of skill set that can um, promote your business and make your business grow. You don't bring people on just because they're a friend and they need a job. Correct. Totally correct. Um, because as the leader of the of the business, it is not going to do it's not going to do your business no good. It's not going to do them no good. Right. Um, so I think that as, so when I'm looking at an individual, you know, I'm assessing their skill set. So the first thing I actually do is write down. So what are you skilled at? Right. And people will tell me what they're skilled at and they say everything but what they're actually skilled at. Right. When we collected that data for the uh, to see who wanted to volunteer for Black Period, um, it was like I was like, why didn't you put down you could do marketing because you're really good at that, and the, and why can you say you know you're good at business because you you're a business owner, right? So it was so when I was talking to some of them, I'd be like, well, you can do this, 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 and this, and they're like, oh, I didn't know that I could do that. I go, yeah, you can. She's like. I was like, because you do, and I, I wrote down, I went down the resume because I was like, I saw you do this, 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 and this. And they were like, oh. So <laughs> it's like, so that is a definitely empowering situation right there to be able to identify someone's skill set and show them how valuable they are and what they bring to the table. Um, because if you know what's in your tool bag, you know what you can bring to the table. And you'll know right. whether or not you should sit at that table or not, or if that table even is for you. So, no um, understanding. Laura Neely, mm -hmm. you know her. She's a photographer. She she's the Laura from the last question. But Laura, she wants to know, being an entrepreneur, what are some main things to keep in mind? If you had to have a list of some main things to keep in mind, Ooh, I know that's that's a lot, right? So main things to keep in mind. I'm gonna, I'm going to start here. You can have it all, but you just can't have it all at the same time, okay? Um, I think that when we start a business, we have it's it's key for us to have a huge vision. That is, what do we where do we see our business at? And that's your that's your sunset, right? That's what you're looking at. But that's not where you start. You start at the smallest point of the triangle, which is the tip, which is where you are, so that you can learn and make small dollar mistakes versus large dollar mistakes. I would rather make a $50 mistake than a $5,000 or $50,000 mistake, right? And that's where that research comes in. So that's one. Um, two, um, you're, this is something everybody says, you're gonna get more no's and you get yeses, um, but the no's are necessary because the no's help you build up your strength, right? It helps you to keep going. It helps you keep pushing up, right? So if you were lifting weights and, you know, every time you pushed up, that was a no, <laughs> you couldn't set it down. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to help you keep pushing, you know, keep pushing on. Um, and I know people look at, you know, we've been in business for seven years and it's like, people are like, oh, I saw you in Target, your, your product's in Target. And I was like, no, we're not in Target yet, but you know, we're going to get there. And I see people all around me look, as far as like hair care products, other companies that are saying we've been in business for three years and five years and two years and they're they're in big you know box retail stores and then i sit back and i was that makes me feel some kind of way you know but i think it, i use that fuel not to burn me up but to drive me and push me further and i but i i take that raw kind of i'm in my feelings and refine it to be able to use that in my tank to push me further okay um so we have to be able to identify that. I think that doesn't matter who's doing what around you. I'm you're running this race yourself. And that is what I remind myself every day. And every day I remind myself of my successes. 
um, cause that's those, I, I, cause I'm going to remember at all times how that success point made me feel. I think those are important because I, I can, I can make product all day, every day, but it's really how I feel, how I think, and it's, it's going to keep me moving. And I'm going to say this, right? Cause we talk about the hustle piece, right? Everybody wants to talk about hustle and you sleep two and three hours. And I was doing that. In two and three hours for 30 days ended me up in the hospital back in like 2016. It was not pretty. I was so mad because my whole family came up to saw me. I thought I was having a heart attack. I wasn't. I, they told me I was healthy as a horse. And um, it was just stress, right? So we can't continue to push our bodies on this grind mode for endless periods of time, okay? You have to take care of yourself, your body weight, because there's no sense in taking care of your body and then you dying and then you can't even really fully see your vision or enjoy your fruits of your labor, right? Exactly. And you'll function better when you take a 30-minute walk every day. You'll reduce the amount of your, your uh, ability to die from a preventable disease by 50% by walking 30 minutes every day day and that was something I had to deal with and make and not make time for because I'm not making time for it. It's a it's a do or die situation. Right. right. And this is me talking to me and I'm hoping it's helping somebody else. But um you you have to do that. Um and once you value that you start seeing things in a whole different light. It's a right. whole different game for you. So I, I walked I worked out 45 minutes before this session and my my uh and well, I'm I'm gonna call him a trainer, but my friend, he's just like, how do you feel? You're gonna be hyped and ready for your interview. You ready? And actually, I feel a ton better after working out. And people don't realize they're like, I don't have time. I'm tired. I'm this and that. You can work out. And I also post uh, videos of there's a, a friend of mine who does chair aerobics. So if you can't get up and move and walk in those type of ways you can do the chair aerobics and just move your arms and legs to music and things like that so you're talking about that health element let's move on to black period because wellness is one aspect of the three for that group what is that all about and how did it come about so powering through entrepreneurship is exactly kind of what black period is and um, the health and wellness piece is important and this it's it's you know it's for I understand from a from a black woman's perspective 137 black women die every day in the United States from preventable heart pre preventable health diseases and it's been proven by girl Trek that uh, you can lower your risk of dying from those preventable diseases by 50 percent so um, and the, you know me personally I didn't have a healthy you know, uh, you know, I worked out. Oh, I haven't worked out because of COVID because <laughs> I haven't been to the gym. So I, I need to find a way to still be in safe physically, right? Outdoors is probably about the safest place and you can social distance really, really well and get in a good exercise. So um, we walk with Black Period. Um, you can walk every day by yourself, you know, you, and usually on Saturdays, we try to come together in groups in various places across Youngstown and Mill Creek Park and Wick Park. Um, or your neighborhood and walk. And in our walking, we're talking about, you know, systemic racism or what we did today or just our stories, our lives so that we can talk to each other. Um, because we haven't, we, we, we're talking online, but even when we're walking, like say if I'm walking at Lake Glacier, we do 9 a.m. on Saturdays in groups. I do Lake Glacier or Wick Park or wherever. Um, I talk and speak to the strangers that walk past me. So I want to see people, right? I want to make sure they know that I'm acknowledging them because we talk to the people we know, but it's more important that we talk to the people that we don't know because right. as a community, we have to take note of those around us by acknowledging their presence and saying, I see you. I see you, what you're doing. I see that you are important and you're of value and I'm going to take enough time to say hello to you. So right. Right. that's kind of what we do. So tell me a little bit more about the other elements of Black Period and okay. how it came about. Yeah, totally. So, um, so we, we sell T-shirts, right? It's a we sell T-shirts, um, and those fifty percent of the profits are going to be invested back into the Black community. Um, and so far to date, we have helped um, three businesses directly. 
um, where we have financially um, invested into their company to help them, right, grow um, whatever small barrier they had. Um, and uh, also with that said, uh, so that's the business and economics side of things. Uh, we also have a scholarship that we just started uh, fundraising for um, the Social Justice Scholarship in Arlene Floyd um, uh, for Success for Black Student Scholarship and Grant at Youngstown State University, where we're selling passports, which I don't have on me right now, for, for $20 to raise money for one full ride scholarship and then several small scholarships um, to help Black students advance. Now, you're buying this passport, but it actually has Black-owned restaurants in it. So when you take this thing, get it stamped, when you spend $20 or more of food, um, that increases your chances of being in this drawing, right? So you're supporting Black-owned restaurants in the area, and you're supporting higher education of, of Black students. And it's a wonderful thing that we're, we're, we're helping to empower the Black-owned businesses, and we're making sure we set up the the uh, help to be will help to be a part of the success of Black students at Yankton State University. So we're doing that um, in that particular nutshell. And then we're also looking at, and I will say, uh, we're also doing voter registration. Um, we do that. We did that at Juneteenth this summer. Um, we'll be doing that again when we go to the Youngstown Fleet the next two months. Um, and then even underneath the health and wellness, I'll say we've been working with Lady Bugs Farms or Sophia, Sophia Bugs, who's awesome and amazing. And she's been gathering together a list of black farmers where we could fully hope support them, right? Supporting black farmers and getting them to the point where, you know, we can help them with lawn care so they can take more time to be in there and take care of their, their garden so they can sell more to their line of distribution. Uh, and sh we're doing a solar cooking, you know, and understanding how to cook with different herbs and vegetables that we normally don't cook with, like bok choy. If you see my page, I had some bok choy last week. So we're doing a whole lot. So um, business and economics, health and wellness, and then civic engagement. And all three of those are important for the success of a business, really, right? So a, a business that's civically engaged, you know, by uh, a business that is, am I civically engaged? We'll give an example of Susie's. Susie's was hosting, um, what was that? That, that the podcast, the, uh, the club, you know what I'm talking about? No, no. Oh, sorry. The city club. They were hosting city. Oh yeah. 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 Every city Monday. Club. Right. So they were hosting city club, but they were selling hot dogs and, wow. and all that stuff. So that was very big for them. Right. Um, and so I call that civic engagement because they're talking about different topics there. They had the you know, space set up for, for that. Um, and that was a big night on their Monday night when they normally wouldn't get anybody in. So that's, there's different ways to be civically engaged and still make money um, in the community. And we want to be able to eventually help different businesses see how to do that. Once we get back to normal, we're going to actually have bigger events, obviously. Um, but, and then healthy food, we want, you know, we want healthy options, um, and then just business in general. Right. So what's on the pipeline next for Miss Carmela Marie Williams? Uh, good question. Um, I will say this. Um, I am, oh, I, and this, that's a really good question. So this is my journal that I started writing and I've had it for a while and I purposely didn't write it because it had the word, it has the word imagine on it, right? The word imagine. And I was at a point where I couldn't really dream. I wasn't really dreaming, right? I didn't feel like I had anything to necessarily dream about. And um, most recently I've started writing in this book. Um, I've started writing visions, right? So I've been writing in this particular piece to get me out of my funk for the question I was asked earlier. And I, I, I write the following, I started off like this. I see myself being successful by doing the following. And then I, I write down small tasks, you know, if it's just getting orders out or making this particular product, something small, short term, and then um, something a little bit more longer term. You know, I've been, uh, I see myself really growing and evolving Carmelo Marie more. Um, I see myself um, being able to help the community um, as much as humanly possible. I see myself being, um, taking on well, being continuing to be a leader that's growing, right? I see myself 
having a balanced life as well. You know, I see myself not working till 12 midnight every night. You know, I, I, um, my, my best bud, you know, I have this kick where I have a list of movies now that I have to, you know, I not have to, but I watch, you know, but cause I would purposely not allow myself to have fun because my tasks weren't done and oh. that wasn't doing me any good. Right. It wasn't doing me any good because it just wasn't. So now I am allowing myself to in, have moments of enjoyment. Um, and my normal self would have said, girl, I'm going to be worldwide domination as pertains to the advancement of, you know, that's my normal self, um, you know, worldwide domination. Um, worldwide domination is coming, but that is not my next immediate goal. That's my vision. Where I'm at right now is I'm going to begin to enjoy this journey. I'm 30, oh, my Lord, I'm 37, gone, 38 years old. I ain't in no 20s no more, you know. Um, I want to be able to build more people so I can duplicate myself so that we, this work can be, can grow and be greater. Um, and I am more settled in who I am. Um, and I know that success is inevitable. Just as long as I keep moving forward, that is all that matters. Whatever that forward is, not whatever that forward is, but however the pace is, I just need to move forward. Right. And keeping that balance is, is necessary. Is um, I was asked, could you share the website where people can purchase the passport? How can people yes. get the passport? You can go to uh, black period, and that is black is spelled out fully. And the period is P E R I O D T dot com. And there's two things. There's one where you can purchase the passport. You see, it's, it's for twenty two. That includes all the shipping and uh, credit card fees. And then there's one just for a donation if you want to just do a donation. And it's on there. Um, if you have further questions on it, you can email Alicia at uh, penguinpassports at gmail.com. Because uh, some people are purchasing large bundles of them. Um, and we can deliver large bundles to individuals. Penguin passports at what? Penguin passports at gmail.com. And I'm putting it into the uh, chat so that you guys can find that. Okay. okay. Um, what's www. Period. Period. Is that a website? No, Our website. Period. dot com. Shante, it's black. Period. dot com. So that's not correct. Yeah. All right. Someone yeah. typed in, but they typed in the wrong. Thing. Oh yeah, black. Period. B l a c k p e r i o d t. dot Yeah. Com. Type that in. Okay. Good. Good. Um, you're an alumnus and alumni from YSU, and I'm going backwards. This is really a backwards question. I probably should have started here first. So you graduate from YSU. Can you briefly just give us, okay, I graduated. What did you do then? And then what was your next step? And then, so can you kind of give us from 2005 all the way up to 2020, some of your steps? Because people are watching who, are graduating or they are new graduates and they're looking like, okay, well, how do I even start? What, what did you do when you graduated? Yeah, so it started before I graduated, right? So when I was at YSU, I couldn't find a normal job, right? So I used my federal work study um, to find a job on campus. You can use that and work anywhere with anybody just as long as they sign off on it. You have federal work study, one. And I worked in the most amazing departments um, and had crazy jobs where I was flipping through magazines and doing research, right? Um, so I was always creative and innovative in my way of making money. Legal. Legal. So that was that. And I can remember I ran into Arlene Floyd at a meeting and she was just, she was a firecracker, still is to this day, love her. And she was saying, talking really what I always wanted to hear. And she had this, just this energy about her. And I walked up to her and this was probably a year before graduation. And I told, or no, it was maybe a year and a half before graduation, two years. And I told her, I was going, I'm gonna work for you one day. And she was like, who's this crazy girl? <laughs> and um, I ended up working for her as a student. Um, and 
that mentor, she became my mentor. I had several other mentors, Rich Delisio, uh, Bart Orton, who just really, really helped me through college, having people in my life. Um, but I ended up working for her and she asked me a question because my major was marketing, was market, was management, excuse me. She asked me what I was going to manage and I couldn't, I didn't have an answer for her. So I switched my major to marketing management because I should have had a minor, but no one told me at the time. And, but I had skill set and my skill set was, I could sell a sock to a horse. I'm a very good salesperson. My mother raised me to be that way. And I ended up working for her. She hired me as a full-time coordinator. And as everybody retired, I got more and more responsibility and got promoted. Um, when I, I got promoted and was assistant director for a very long time, um, and she was instrumental in training me, right? She was always pushing us for professional development as I work for her. So now I graduated in 2005. I'm definitely full time by like 2006, right? She find you a place where they are willing to invest in you because they believe in you. Okay. And Miss Arlene Floyd, um, we went to, we had professional development every year and I learned so much. Um, and I, I won't take it back for anything. I learned a lot from her and from the experiences. Um, and then I grew, I kept growing, I kept learning. I kept, she kept giving me new things to do and to conquer and giving it to, with me, to me without you know, looking over my shoulder because she trusted me. Finds a place where you know someone, you know, they trust you to do the work, to get the work done. Um, so I worked there for 12 years. Um, and then, you know, I was like, I need to look somewhere else, right? I, I think 12 years is a little long, but I think it's because I was comfortable in that situation. Um, you know, it was my first job out of, you know, out of college. You know, I got a promotion. I was traveling all the time. It was awesome, right? Um, I would say that I started looking because I wanted to be challenged again. Because I could do my, my work with my eyes closed. So there was no more challenge for me. Um, so I... I didn't have the skill set necessarily when I went in as far as counseling people. So what I did while I was at YSU is I started counseling people in my downtime, right? So when you don't have that experience, you create for yourself the experience, right? So I just started, because people wanted to know how I did it and all this stuff. So I put that on my resume underneath Carmela Marie, because I started it then. This is, you know, I do business counseling. I do that. Da, 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 and I did. And it was totally legit. And people actually started businesses because they were just simply coming and being around me, you know? So when I got hired, it was a no brainer. It was a no brainer that I had a vision, I had drive and we moved. Um, you know, I will say the average individual stays at a job now, nowadays about three years, right? Um, three to five years. Um, people aren't staying at jobs for 30 years anymore. Um, so times have changed. Um, so, and, and sometimes the only way up is through moving, right? If there's, if there's no thing. So, um, you have to kind of just roll with the punches, you know, and know when it's time. I will say that know when it's time, know when you've learned all the lessons that you need to learn and then take those lessons and transfer that skill set into your next journey. So. And then that's where Carmela Marie became. And then you moved yes. on to Black Period. Okay, right, so we're coming to the end of our time. Okay. Are, is there anything that you would like to leave the audience with? Any messages you would like to end with? And I, I just have to make a point of something that you just said. You said to go to a place where they will invest in you. Mm -hmm. And I remember you telling me, telling my son that. When he came down for YBI for their um, Shark Tank project, yeah. and I was talking to you about him possibly going to another school, and you said, make sure you go to a place where they invest in you. And so when you just said that right now, I was like, she said that before, years ago, and she still lives by that model. But again, do, are there any, uh, is there any last message that you would like to leave with our audience today? Yeah, um, some action steps, actually. Um, I challenge you to go and sit down and imagine, not imagine, but sit down and write all your skill sets down, every single last one of them. If you if you are a female or whoever, if you're running a house, you got kids, you're married, you're doing, you're balancing checkbook, you are basically the CEO of an entire organization, right? 
Those are skills. Those are valuable skills that can be transferred. Two, I want you to sit down and I want you to imagine the following, right? Um, ask yourself the following. What would it feel like and what would you do if you were fully supported? What would you do? And, tr and then from that question, I want you to dream, right? Um, and I'm gonna leave you with this. The reason why I'm telling you to dream is because we were, we were born to grow, right? We came out the womb, pee, you know, peeing, crying, pooping, eating, and our only goal in life was to grow. All right. And then as children, we were excited and everything was new. And we just, you know, we had dreams of what ice cream would taste like if it were blue. You could, because mommy gave me white ice cream last time. You know, there's all these things we have to grow. We have to continuously grow. Somewhere along the line, someone told us to stop dreaming because those were too big and frivolous ideas. And we, we sat in our place, we soaked and we soured. And now there are miserable people in the United States of America who stopped dreaming, who stopped imagining, who stopped daydreaming. Those times when we have nothing to do are the best times for you to sit and imagine the vision for your life. Um, and once you do that, the level of excitement, the level of energy, your ambition, um, all the things you're doing, you're going to get that energy. To, to continue on and to run on. And you're gonna see yourself growing and wanting to find out new information. But it all starts with the question of, you know, what would I do if I was fully supported and money weren't an issue? And write that stuff down and then see what comes out. And don't be afraid to start at the smallest point to achieve those things because we're not, we're, we're not trying to get there tomorrow we want to learn how to enjoy the journey towards achieving that goal. And that, my dear, is entrepreneurship. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carla Marie Williams of Carla Marie Williams Hair Care Products of Black Period. We thank you so much for being part of this alumni series. Thank you. I'm Janda Jackson, Senior Lecturer at YSU, owner and director of one-to-one -one communication consulting. Thank you so much for joining in today on Facebook Live. And we hope to hear you, uh, have you come and join us for our next alumni series. Definitely. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome and thank you all. Thank you, Jayetta. You're welcome.